everyone. I am in the middle of driving on about a six to six and a half hour road trip right now. Um, I got my dogs with me in the truck. They're sleeping away. That meatball's not sleeping away. He's back here. Got my wife and son. They're in the car behind me as we're making our way down to South Carolina in the middle of this transition and this move. And I thought I'd just take some time. I have some, some thoughts on my brain I really wanted to share with you guys. Um, and I thought I'd take a little bit, uh, take advantage of a little bit of time here on the road to, to talk through those those things. And, and, and what's been on my brain is our role as believers, um, our role as uh, Christians and, and what we're called to do in serving the church and serving the people around us. Um, in, in using the different talents and abilities that God has blessed us with. Um, in, in my case, um, in what we're doing, this kind of tends to focus more on the music and the worship side of things, but really, um, I think this is, this is something that carries over into not just music, but in all areas of how we serve the church and serve people around us, because um, I think when we mission, mention worship, a lot of times our mind automatically goes to music, but in reality, our worship, ultimately our goal should be in everything we do to glorify God and to point to God, and, and I think, you know, in doing that in our lives, that's, that's how we worship Him. So, um, I wanted to focus and talk about how we're using our talents and abilities, the things that God has blessed us with. Um, in Matthew 25, Jesus tells the parable of the three men that were given talents by their master. Um, one man was given five talents, one man was given two talents, one man was given one talent. And in this particular parable, uh, the word talents is used, but it, it's kind of implied that it is something of monetary value or something of that nature. Uh, the master goes away. Um, the man with five talents goes out and invests them. The man with two talents goes out and, and invests them. The man with one talent takes his and uh, digs a hole and buries it so that no one will find it and he won't lose it. Um, after a while, the master comes back and he basically calls these, these men to him and, and says, you know, what have you done with what I have given you? The man with five talents, because he's gone out and invested it, not only has the five original talents, but he has five more. The man with two talents says it's the same story. Not only does he have the original two talents, but he's now received two more. But the man with one talent just has the one that was given to him. Um, and the master rewards the, the two men that went out and invested those. But for the one with the one talent, he calls him a slothful servant. Not only that, he, he takes the one talent that was given to him and, and gives it to the man that had five talents and basically says, um, I gave you, you something and you didn't use it. You didn't go out and invest it wisely. You hid it. Um, and I really believe that with talents and abilities that we've been given, that it's a similar thing um, in how we serve our church and congregation. Each each one of us has been given abilities um, and talents and uh, things that we can use to serve other people, serve the people around us. Um, and I believe that ultimately we're supposed to use those things to serve people around us so that in the end, it, it points to Christ. Um, and so I think practically the question is, is how do we do that? How do we use these things wisely? And so my focus is to, to talk specifically when it comes to music. So on a Sunday morning, how are we using what God has blessed us with to serve the church? And in serving the church, ultimately point back to God. Um, and glorify God and worship Him. 
And I think the word, I think there's two words that this comes down to. I think the first word is stewardship. And I think the second word, which is kind of under that stewardship umbrella, I think the second word is preparation. Um, I think we take stock of what it is that we're doing. And we ask ourselves the question, ultimately, are we stewarding, are we using um, what God has given us? Are we using our time? Are we investing those things in the best way that we possibly can? Are we, are we preparing um, for a Sunday morning worship service in the best way that we possibly can? Um, are we striving for excellence in what we do um, so that God is glorified? Because what we're doing is not, we're not trying to make the perfect worship set. We're not trying to play music perfectly. We're not trying to play the best riffs and make that the ultimate goal. But I think what we're trying to do is play them in, in play as well as we can, prepare as well as we can with the ultimate goal of giving God glory. We're saying God has given us this talent and ability and now we're going to invest it back. Now we're going to spend time working because what, what those two men with the talents that invested, it was action. They went out and they worked to to not return empty-handed, to not return with just what had been given, but they work to return with more. Um, so I think we need to ask ourselves that question. Are we doing that same thing with what we've been given? Um, and, you know, in music and worship, I, it's a philosophy of mine um, that when we're on that platform on Sunday morning leading the congregation in worship, um, our goal should be to be as not distracting as possible. To be not distracting. And I think a lot of times we kind of look on the spectrum of in, in evaluating that. Are we playing these awesome guitar riffs? Are we um, is the drummer doing these really cool intricate fills or is the singer doing all these runs and licks? And I think a lot of times we tend to say we're, we're going to err away from that side of things because we don't want to bring attention to ourselves and, and distract, be distracting for the congregation. And I think there's merit to that. Um, we, if we're doing anything on that platform on Sunday mornings that is bringing attention to us as the individual and taking the congregation's focus away from worshiping and glorifying God in the music that they're singing, then I think we're doing something wrong. But, but, I think that pendulum also swings the other way. Um, if we're on that platform and we're playing music and we're making mistakes and we're playing music that is mediocre and we're settling for that, I think that is also just as distracting. And that is also pulling the congregation's focus away from worshiping and glorifying God. So how do we, how do we combat that? And I think it comes down to our preparation. I think there is a balance of of playing well and not not trying to do the flash flashiest things but I think we also can play well enough that the congregation is able to effectively worship to sing praises and glorify God and I think um, it comes down to taking that intentional time to steward our time before Sunday morning to prepare our hearts to prepare our mind to prepare um, our abilities to lead worship on Sunday mornings. Our pastor spends sometimes 15 to 20 hours preparing a message, spending time in prayer, preparing his heart so that he can stand in front of the congregation and preach through God's Word and effectively share the Word. He doesn't just get up there and wing it, or he doesn't get up there Sunday morning and an hour before it's time decide what scripture he's going to speak on and just hope that the Holy Spirit works through him. 
least I hope he doesn't. Um, he spends time in intentional prayer and intentional study so that he can effectively share and lead our congregation. And I believe we as musicians should do the same thing. We should spend time evaluating what we're singing, trying to prepare the worship set and craft the worship set so that the gospel is shared and proclaimed. And we should spend time preparing and practicing, not with a goal to play the most, the most awesome set that we've ever played, but with a goal of playing well so that we are not distracting from the congregation. And I think that there's different ways that we can do this, but I think if we steward our time and our talents and our abilities wisely and with the ultimate goal of glorifying God, I think we'll see seeds planted and I think that we'll see fruits come out of those seeds that are that are planted. We'll see um, lost people come to know Jesus because let's be honest, a lot of the way that people that don't know Jesus, the way they look at us, they see subpar art. They see subpar music. And why in the world would they take anything we say seriously if we're willing to settle for mediocre, for mediocrity? And I think in some ways we, we as the church have been willing to settle for mediocrity. Now, I, diff I realize that different people have different abilities and different levels. Um, and, and not everybody is as good of a musician as others. And that's okay. Are you taking what you've been given and investing it to play to the best of your ability? Or are you just settling? And I think that's the question. And I think this carries over in other areas too. If you have a talent with watching and taking care of kids, are you taking time and preparing um, how to watch the kids on Sunday morning to share stories with them or gospel stories with them that are going to point them to Jesus? Or are you just showing up and watching the kids and then leaving and eating lunch? Um, I think what this calls us to is not just a Sunday morning ex experience where we compartmentalize um, our worship to just a Sunday morning, but what this calls us to do is spend intentional time during the week in preparation. Um, I hope this makes sense, this ramble. It's something that I feel very passionate about. Um, I feel passionate about that preparation, that intentionality, that stewardship. Um, and, it, and it's something I hope that I can communicate effectively um, because I want to see God glorified. I want to see the gospel shared. I want to see people come to know Jesus. And I, I want to do things well. I want, I want our art to be good. So it's my prayer that that happens. Um, I want you guys to know that I love you. And we will strive for excellency with the ultimate goal, knowing that we're going to make mistakes, and that's okay, because ultimately God is glorified in those mistakes as well, but I know and I have faith that in the end, Romans 8, God will work everything for His glory and good in the end, and so we can take comfort in that. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's it.